So the settings for the photos was uh, 20 second interval, lowest aperture, that's the only setting of aperture, and 15 second exposure, and then ISO was 12800, so obviously you need to change your settings depending on if the moon's out or, you know, how dark the night sky is. If you're shooting cities, you'd have to lower them settings a bit. So just bear that in mind that settings for each scenario is always going to be different. So don't always just copy someone's. So I can show you real quick when you plug in your DJI Osmo Action to your computer, you'll click on your SD card, however you connected it, and then go into your photo files. So this in here, and then it'll create a new folder called time lapse. And then I've shot a few in here, but 059 is the one I actually used. So in here, you'll see all your DNG files. So what you want to do is just copy and paste these over to a faster hard drive. I've already done that, so you don't need to worry about that. You can work off the SD card, but it's going to take a lot longer. LR time lapse. Here we go. So we've got all our files loaded in. Now we can preview this as well and scrub through it as we need to. We can see it doing its thing. Now, usually this is the stage where you would take out images that maybe have too much light. So if you see a spike in here, best to take it out, even if it's just one frame. Say someone shone a light on the camera or something, just take that off. And then all we need to do is just click on keyframes wizard and I usually put in like, you know, at least three or four frames. So five frames should be enough. And these blue dim diamonds are just where keyframes are. And then all you have to do is save that. And then once that's loaded, we just drag it straight into the library like this and then just click import. And then down here on the bottom right, I go to filters and I just click on keyframes. And then this brings up the keyframes I just made. And then as soon as one's loaded in, I double click on it and go straight to develop. So now you're seeing the full resolution DNG. And then from here, I just adjust my settings. So I usually, sometimes white balance auto works, but then I just like to make it look a bit more natural, bring the blues back in, and then all the other stuff. I'm not gonna adjust it too much for this tutorial, but you know, put a bit of contrast in there. Maybe sometimes I drop the exposure because it's a little bit, sometimes gets a bit too much. And white's generally just a little bit just for the stars. Now, depending on your photo, you can change a lot more of this. For the sharpening, sometimes I do change that as well. Luminance, I usually go up to just 20. Seems to work quite well just to get rid of some of that grain. This photo is really noisy, so um, I actually might just put it to 25. And then you can just adjust little details in there as well. Okay, so we're not going to go too much into that. You can make the decision on what you want to do here. Once you've done one keyframe, all you need to do is just keep it selected, hold shift, select everything, and now just go scripts and sync keyframes. And that makes all the keyframes the exact same. Go through each photo. You can adjust individually exposure and stuff. So you could change that to, oh, like I want that one a little bit brighter in the middle. Or say this one's a little bit too dark. Just put a bit more exposure in there. And then that'll just keep it more consistent. So just go through. Try and keep most of the settings the same. Otherwise, just change them as you want. You can pretty much do what you want here. But just bear in mind it's going to make fluctuations in your time lapse if you do that. So yeah, that's all the photos edited, lightly edited here. So now I can just select all of them and I just go metadata, save metadata to files. And this is going to reload it into time -lap LR time lapse. And then you can just go auto transition. And then now it's going to calculate all the keyframes, all the, all the frames in between the keyframes. And then yeah, all we need to do now is just wait for these to load. And you can see it's just loading all the data in between the keyframes. Okay, that's all done. So that's processed all them images between the keyframes. Okay, now you can go and deflicker your image. So just click on Visual Deflicker. Generally, the default settings will do the job. Uh, but if you're having problems, just click on More, and then Multipass multi -pass Deflicker. And then you can turn this right up to 50 if you want. But if I'm having problems, generally, I'll just go to 10. Um, so you can do that. I'm just going to leave it at default for now. Uh, but it really depends how, how many how many flickering problems you're having. If you're having serious flickering issues, it might not be able to fix it, but it will try its best. So now we're just going to run the deflicker. Okay, so that's all of it done. You can visually preview it here. That's nice and smooth now. See that line as your output. All we have to do now is export and render. So just choose a folder. You know where it's going. 4K30. We can make this... We can make this 60 frames a second because it's quite a long one. And then I just select the settings you want. I go ultra high, high, whatever you need to do. Uh, high is usually pretty good. Uh, I just use ultra sometimes to enhance any visual artifacting. And then that's it. There's your settings. You can choose what you want in here. You can even put motion blur in there if you want. You can sharpen it. And then you export it. That's it. And then here's the final product. So this is the file you will make out of that. So that's you can pick any frame rate you want. That's 4K60. 
probably a bit too noisy, but it doesn't look too bad. Next time I just need to make the exposures longer, because there's actually no star trail in there at all. You can see the planes flying past to the airport. And that's the horses running around in the foreground there. But yeah, there you go. That's how you'd make your time lapse more efficient and better quality from the DJI Osmo 4. Hope that helps. Hope it was a simple enough review. Please let me know in the comments if you need anything else, you want to know anything else about that.